All right, let's see what I've gotten myself into. Thomas Riley manages to purchase a house in Sheriff's Sale for a very good deal, which makes him enter his new house with excitement. That excitement is soon turned into fear and terror when he realizes the house is haunted by a vengeful and hostile entity. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator. If you have any game suggestions or theories, make sure to send them my way on my Twitter and subreddit. As always, this video will have spoilers, and with that said, let's dive in. A set of found footage are found which the authorities seemingly watch after the presumable disappearance of Thomas Riley. Thomas, managing to purchase a fantastic home for cheap at a sheriff's sale, pulls over in his new home's driveway while being observed by a strange entity from an upstairs window, despite the house being emptied. As Thomas enters the house, he mentions how he was told that the previous owner suddenly disappeared, hence why the house was sold for so cheap. Thomas being informed about security system also being installed in the house, he goes on to find the tablet which allows him to monitor and control his security cameras. As Thomas finds the tablet and starts activating the motion sensors in each room, a dark shadow entity is seen walking behind him in the upstairs room, which brings the question if the entity that was observing Thomas is the same dark shadow being that passed across the doorframe. As Thomas goes to check the room, he comes across an empty room, which makes him question his sight if what he saw was a figment of his imagination after a long drive to the new house or an actual being. As Thomas ignores this occurrence and goes on to check the basement's camera, he notices that the door is locked. He subsequently goes on to find the key to the basement, which doesn't work with the first key that he finds. A mysterious monstrous looking doll then appears on a white armchair in the living room, which Thomas completely ignores despite my efforts of making him interact with them or at least show a sliver of concern. But nonetheless, I get tired and let Thomas go ahead to find another key. Finding another key in bedroom number two, it similarly doesn't work, which is followed by a sound of something falling over upstairs. What was that? Sounds like something fell over upstairs. As Thomas goes up to check it, I notice on the way that the creepy looking child doll is gone, just for it to reappear in bedroom number two, with Thomas acting absolutely oblivious to its presence. Rolling my eyes just a little bit and Thomas going to the spare room to check the source of the sound, a dark shadowy entity is seen on a wheeled chair crammed in the corner of a tight space staring directly at the wall, seemingly being punished for being the rowdy kid in class or, in this case, the rowdy demon in the house. Thomas fails to see the demon as it's situated at an angle with Thomas coming across a flipped over box with multiple identical keys which makes him decide to go to bed as it's already too late so he can check the basement the day after. Yet again, no matter how much I try to convince Thomas to go to the corner and check on the demon, ask generally if it's okay and that he's not too bothered about the sound that it made, it seems that the keys and the box create an uncrossable barrier preventing Thomas from stepping over them. As Thomas goes down to the foyer, he hears something breaking, which makes him change plans momentarily and check on the source of the sound. Going to the family room, Thomas notices an urn being broken with ash covering the carpet, which he for some reason doesn't see at the right time and steps on, which makes it go in his shoes and in between his toes as he's the cool type not wearing socks while wearing shoes. That's when the lights suddenly go off, activating the camera's night mode, with the creepy doll reappearing once again sitting on the sofa, which Thomas of course doesn't see again. Using a mechanic known as situational awareness in the game, Thomas uses the only few lines included in this feature, which are appropriately expressed in here with Thomas going around to see what's happening. God damn it. God damn it. Shit. Just as he enters the foyer, the door in there opens with an excited demonic shadow being smiling, seemingly having fun scaring Thomas, who then slowly closes the door not to blow his cover, or at least not for now. Yet again, Thomas misses this incident, which leaves me frustrated in my seat, pressing every button on the keyboard to interact with the door. But again, I'm left completely disappointed. Thomas embarks on his journey back upstairs, noticing a window being open. 
As he closes it, the lights turn back on, which makes him realize something or someone must be messing with him when he decides to go down to the basement, finally, to check the fuse box. As he arrives back in the living room, he comes across a message written on the wall with blood, reading, not your home, with a trail leading down to the basement. Thomas being fed up with the ghost informs it that it is not its home as he has proof of the purchase, reasonably not willing to compromise and leave as he bought it for a real good price. Is that blood? Not your home. Why well, got news for you? It is my home. And with current inflation rates and house prices on the rise, I probably do the same thing and charge the ghost as a lodger as no ghosts would be squatting in my place of dual ink, especially with the amount of times they shut the lights off and on and opening the window so many times, dismissing the fact that humans need heating and gas prices aren't getting any cheaper. As Thomas follows the blood trail, he's faced with a wide open basement door conveniently when he decides to use his phone to record his experience in a POV angle. Coming across a dirty and smelly basement with a mattress and scattered clothes displaying as if someone has been living here. As Thomas gets busy fixing the camera in the basement, a zombie looking man is seen acting very strangely, crawling and standing still when he decides to rush Thomas with a baseball bat and hit him behind the head which makes him suffer from a concussion. The authorities watching this weird found footage skip ahead, seeing Thomas having a blood stain behind his head, slowly getting up, who mumbles to himself that the previous owner didn't disappear, but as a matter of fact, he's been living in the basement. Look, I'm not a person to judge how others live their lives, but who in their right mind would stage their disappearance and live in the basement just for their house to be sold to someone else? And why did it look like a cheap version of Nosferatu? Yeah. The only possible explanation that might ring a bell here is that maybe he couldn't afford the mortgage and lost the house, or was about to. So he decided to live in the basement instead of leaving. But it still doesn't add up as why would someone with such well presented and tidy house think he could ever live in a basement with no one noticing? It also doesn't explain a lot of the paranormal events that took place there. As Thomas being rightfully annoyed, he in a soft and monotone manner expresses how he's going to get this man for what what he did. Where did that bitch go? It's time for some payback. That's when he goes to the dining room to see the corpse of this man chopped into pieces and butchered like a sacrifice in a demonic ritual. Thomas just simply vents his anger before coming to the conclusion what he's seeing is not right, what someone else must have been the culprit, a much more capable entity who could deliver the same fate to Thomas. As Thomas decides to finally leave, he finds himself back in the dining room, again and again, realizing he's trapped in some sort of a loop, distorting his reality, preventing him from leaving the place. As Thomas tries leaving a few more times, he finds himself teleported to the upstairs level with the attic stairs or the loft stairs for my British fellows open with the ghost seemingly inviting him there. As Thomas excited to see what's upstairs, YouTube ads seemingly play with segments of the real life Bad Ben movies playing, just leaving us completely high and dry of what could be there. With Thomas back on the second floor with the attic stairs gone, reminiscing on what a cool experience it was being in the attic seeing so many ghosts, being the highlight of the whole experience, just adding insult to the injury of us being deprived of such masterful once in a lifetime experience. Oh my god, that attic was the craziest shit. I've never seen so many hot ghosts in my life. Man, that was like the highlight of this whole experience. Anyways, moving on. Thomas just simply moves on, trying to go to the spare room when he gets teleported into a void which causes the footage get corrupted. Skipping the footage forward, it's shown that Thomas has lost his glasses and is crawling on all fours, seemingly beaten up by the ghost he so desperately wanted to take on, which causes the footage corrupt once more. Skipping the footage once more, the horrifying mystery is unveiled with the previous owner seen crawling on his chest, with the same outfit Thomas had, but being 
being tattered and filthy, revealing that the previous Nosferatu-looking owner was no other than Thomas Riley, the person who purchased the house for a cheap deal, being stuck in the void for so long that he lost his mind to some level, being all on his own, surrounded by white, being deprived of any food or water, someone surviving under mysterious paranormal events. That's when the mentally unstable Thomas gets teleported back to the house in the spare room, looking through the window to see the old version of himself, Thomas, pulling up to the driveway to enter his recently purchased house. This brings the story to the very start when Thomas pulled over in the driveway to enter his new house. And this, my fellow audience, reveals that Thomas Riley is trapped in a never-ending loop, being attacked by his future self who was seemingly trapped in a white void and survived there seemingly seemingly for many decades turning him into a walking and living corpse, who slowly turned into Nosferatu, hitting his past self with a bat and running away. It seems the future Thomas actually didn't want to hurt the past Thomas but simply wanted to escape the house and this nightmarish loop, but he nevertheless ends up as a sacrifice. The past Thomas, or the new one, then gets trapped in the white void to spend years upon years until he loses his sanity and livelihood, turning into what seems like a monster looking dude and then finally encountering his past self who he tries to evade and escape the house, just to fall victim to the paranormal powers of the house, just for the loop to repeat itself over and over again. The original movie is about a ghost of a child who is called Ben, seemingly, hence why the game and the movies are called Bad Ben. But we'll leave the story of the movie out with the possibility of the ghost being the vengeful spirit of Ben. But the shadow entity is tall and looks like an adult, which makes me think the story of the game deviated from the story of the movies. <sighs> what a story. I actually enjoyed the game very much especially the very necessary implemented so-called situational awareness mechanic. If you folks also enjoyed the game, you can stay tuned for more by hitting on the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your host, Star. Until the next video, have a fantastic day.